1 Thessalonians chapter 5. We want to use for a subject this morning the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. Amen. We are in the midst of trouble in the world. The coronavirus has really stirred up a lot of people. I got some phone calls uh, this week um, from some young folks asking basically, is this it? Uh, what you think about what's going on? And of course, we just let them know what the scripture says. But I want us to be reminded and of course, the fear is of dying from this disease. But we must be reminded of what the Lord said in the book of Ecclesiastes. And that is that there is a time for everything. And one is time to be born and a time to die. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. And millions of people die every year. The day of the Lord. I want you to know that God is allowing this pandemic to take place. Man is not in control. God is in complete control. They, they, they are working on a vaccine and they should be. They should be doing everything that they are doing. And I'm sure we, we are glad they are. But ultimately we know that God is in control. As we said this week, you can prepare the horse for the battle, but safety is in the Lord. We make all of our preparations and we need to keep doing that. But remember, <laughs> there's a lot of ways that you can get the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of different people that you can get it from. Mm -hmm. So guess what? If the Lord won't allow it to happen, it's going to happen. Right. Either way it goes, it's going to happen. But again, the key is is that we keep our faith in the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> in looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, <laughs> we see that nothing has changed. Look at that first verse. The scripture says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. You see, that is a time, as we already stated in Ecclesiastes, that's a time for everything. Right. And some of the things that people that I talked to this week, I was letting them know that according to the scripture, the Lord is not going to come back until certain things take place. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and so don't look for him today no. or tomorrow because certain things have to take place according to the word of God. And some of those things we find over in the book of Matthew. Let's turn there and we'll come back to 1 Thessalonians. Matthew chapter 24. No, I don't know the day nor the hour. The Son of God don't even know. But God knows. Amen. And that's what the book says. Amen. But I also know that as, they, as he addressed the times, and these are the times when, of course, the scripture is loaded uh, with different things that must take place. As we read over in Luke chapter 17, it talks about uh, the times of Noah day, how things were during Noah day. If we go over to the book of Revelations, which we preached not too long ago, we didn't go to that 18th chapter. But if you start in that 6th chapter of the book of Revelations all the way through the 18th chapter, you will find 21 signs. The seven seals, you find that. You find the seven trumpets. 
and the seven bowls. So there are all there are a lot of signs before the Lord comes back. Before the day of the Lord. Now the day of the Lord is ultimately the end of time. Look at that first verse. The scripture says, And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. They, 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 you see, they were just bragging about this beautiful building. But Jesus let them know that there's going to come a time that it's going to be destroyed. Actually, brought on, they burned, actually, when they came and took over, they actually burned uh, all of the, that concrete down to dust. In that third verse, the scripture says, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? And of the end of the what? world. When is it going to be? When, when is the end of the world coming? That's what I want to know. And guess what? A lot of people are thinking that same thing today. People are dying not just in the United States, but all over the world. And so they want to know, well, is this it? What well, the scripture says, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. And if you remember back in Acts, uh, uh, they were instructed the same thing. Luke, about the time. Don't, don't worry about the time. And, and, and we shouldn't worry about the time. It's good to know what the scripture says about the signs. Amen. He left them here for a reason. But, but if you notice here, it says, take heed that no man deceive you. Yeah, man. You know, this is one of the, the biggest things. And as we conclude this morning, we're going to actually look at deception. Because there are a lot of people out there. In fact, one of the young people that called talked about some things that they got on Facebook and actually was uh, uh, scaring the person. And, and I said, that's not what the Bible says. You know, so don't let nobody fool you. Go, make sure you get it from the Bible. Amen. Amen. Right. It says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall do what? Deceive many. Yeah. A lot of people don't know the Lord. A lot of people that even go to church, they wish you wash it, and, 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 and they are tear, and, and they will be deceived. He said, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But look at what he says there. But the end is what? It's not yet. It, it, it's not time for the end. But this stuff has to happen. This coronavirus has to happen, and it's going to, uh, I know y'all heard about that curve. Guess who's in charge of that curve? The Lord is. He's even in charge of war, the scripture tells us. When he calls for a war to cease, it has to cease. So when it's time for this coronavirus to end, it's up to the Lord. Amen. But he wants to remind us that the end is not yet. So what? Don't be afraid. In fact, the Christians should be encouraged. Because right. whether we live or die, the scripture says we are what? We are the Lord's. So regardless of what happens, you're in God's hands. Amen. And thank God for that. Because most people are not in God's hands according to his word as a what? A straight and narrow path and as a broad road. So we are blessed. Amen. In that seventh verse it says, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and a famine is what? Extreme uh, 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 scarcity of food. There's no food, or very little food. So there are famines in the, in the world. And the next he says, and pestilences. And what is that? A fatal epidemic disease. 
So the coronavirus is a pestilence according to the word of God. You see, this isn't new. The Lord then told us about pestilences, about these diseases, this fatal epidemic disease, a pandemic as we, we say, disease. It's a pestilence. And then he says, and earthquakes in diverse places or various places. I don't know if you knew, but we just had an earthquake this past week in Utah. And there were a lot of people that couldn't access the medical stuff because of the earthquake had knocked out the power. So he had already told us this stuff is going to happen, but remember, the end is not yet. He said these things must come to pass. And in that 8th verse it says, all these are the beginning of what? Sorrow. Sorrows. That's a beginning of sorrow. <laughs> so guess what? It, 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 it's, it's not good. It, it's, it's troubling. It's, it's sorrowful, especially for those who don't know Christ. Amen. They, 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 they don't have a way out. So it's the beginning of sorrows. Yeah. In the ninth verse, it says, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations. For what? My name's sake. Yeah. If you're going to take a stand for the Lord, you're going to be hated. People, I'm going to tell you something. The, the least thing people want to hear is about God right now, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Amen. Because they're looking for a quick fix. That's right. They're looking for when I'm going to get my job back. When, when, I'm, when the check's going to start coming back. And I don't want to hear nothing about no God. You know, when they don't, you, you need to see the big picture. The big picture is eternal. In the 10th verse it says, And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false, and that is again, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive men. There are a lot of false prophets out there today. There are a lot of people that's pushing the wrong thing. We were just in our Sunday school lesson and the primary focus was on who? Jesus Christ. They're pushing the wrong thing and a lot of people are being deceived. I, I, I didn't say that. I'm repeating what Jesus said. A lot of people are being fooled. Because they are continue to tell people what they want to hear. No. Amen. And we'll see a little bit more of that as we close this morning. But, but remember that. Remember what Jesus is saying about these false prophets or false preachers. He says, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Hmm. They used to say blood is thicker than water. Everybody's going to be for themselves. The love of many will wax cold. And you're going to see that more and more. And we need to understand, too, that we're just scratching the surface. The, the people that have been killed by this virus cannot compare uh, with the plague back in 1918. It was 50 million people that, uh, uh, that died. And in the 1300s, there was another plague where 75 million had died. Dogs were uh, uh, dig, uh, 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 pulling up people out of shallow graves. And, and, and each day they had a, 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 a group that went out to get the dead bodies off the streets. There were people that wouldn't even go and, and try to deal with their children or their husband or wife because what? They didn't want to get the plague. 75 million people died in the 1300s. So it would get to a point where every man for himself is going to be the word for the day. So the scripture tells us, as we close it in here, it says, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And look at what he says. And then shall the end come. Amen. My Lord. My Lord. Amen. I want to look at one more thing here uh, and before we move on. The scripture says if you go down to the um, 22nd verse. 
Well, the 21st verse real quick. It says, same book, same chapter. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world. To this time, no nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be what? Be short. 24th verse, for there shall arise false Christ, false prophet, that is again, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. There's a lot of people out there already doing a whole lot of signs. Uh, I don't know if some of y'all seen this thing on television, the Supernatural show that they have on there every day. All about signs and people flock to signs. Uh, I believe God is, God can do anything. He, he can still raise the dead if he, if he so choose. But a lot of people are being fooled by the signs. Signs and wonders, the so-called miracles that are going on uh, in the world today. But again, Remember, in Thessalonians, and we're going back to Thessalonians. Let's go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. He starts out telling us about what? About the signs of the time. Again, 1 Thessalonians 5, he said, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. Why? Guess what? I told you already. <laughs> You, you, you've already been informed about the end time. He says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Let's look at, uh, if you turn this over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. And let's look at that 10th verse. The tenth verse. There's plenty of room right up here by this third row here. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter one. Let's look at that. Either one of those. No, 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 no. You can sit with him. Sit with him. Amen. Amen. Good. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and the 10th verse, it says, uh, no, you know what, I need to go back. Go back up a couple of verses. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. In the 8th verse, it says, For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God would is spread abroad. So that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you. And how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. And then he says in that 10th verse, and to wait for his son from heaven. Whom he raised from the dead. Even Jesus, which delivered us from what? The wrath to come. So they were already told this. They, and, and, and he's talking about how they have been growing and what they have been doing. But also he reminds them about what? The wrath to come. You have been delivered from the wrath to come. So that's why he said, I don't need to, um, to tell you this. But look at that fourth chapter and that sixth verse. The fourth chapter and the sixth verse. It says, That to no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any manner. Because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. So guess what? They have been forewarned already. And this is why he says, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. This is why he says, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. 
Because you already know this. You have already been informed about the coming of our Lord. In that third verse, the scripture says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. My Lord. They shall not escape. Now, you wonder, how is it that they could be deceived? Because he's talking about those false prophets. Who's saying peace and safety after the rapture? False prophets. If you will look back up at the fourth chapter, just above the fifth chapter, you don't have to go all the way to the beginning of the chapter, but, and, and most of you already know this, but if you will look at 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13, the scripture said, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, yeah, yeah. that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. And he talks about the Christians being taken off the earth to meet the Lord in the air. And then he says in that 18th verse, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, after the church has been raptured out, after we have gone on to be with the Lord, then how is it, as we go back to that, that third verse, it says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. What is he saying there? They're going to be false prophets. Remember what Jesus just told us over there continuously about the false prophets. And I want to tell you something. It's a shame that ministers today that will not tell people about hell. They will not call sin, sin today. So many will not tell people what does say the Lord of repenting of their sins. They want to tell people that everything is going to be all right. They want to tell people that you're going to have your best life right now. They want to tell people that your business is going to grow a hundredfold. They want to tell people that, that, that what God has for you is for you and, and you're just going to have it running over and abundantly. They, they want to continue to preach about how good things are going to be for you. Instead of including about the wrath of God. But we want them to be at ease. Peace and safety. Oh, everything is going to be all right. If a person is into whatever is going on, whatever sin they're in, we need to preach about it. You don't preach at people, you preach to people. Amen. The Word of God will take care of everything. Any kind of sin that we may be in, God will call it out. And people need to know. You can't be living with somebody you're not married. To. That's sin. You can't be, I don't care how good he looks or good she looks, that's not your husband, that's not your wife, you shouldn't be having sex with that person. And if you are gay, LGBTQ plus, then guess what? You're on your way to hell. I don't care how nice you are, I don't care how good you are, you cannot live in sin. But we don't want to tell people what does say the Lord, and we sure don't want to talk about hell. <laughs> Remember what you say, people live as if hell don't exist. <laughs> it exists. And it's a terrible thing for someone to die and go to hell. But this is what we have here for when they say peace and safety, 
then sudden destruction is going to come. We're going to ask you to turn to the book of Jeremiah as we begin to close. Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6. We have a classic example of what Paul is talking about in Jeremiah chapter 6. The day of the Lord. The day of of the Lord. And there were times that God had to punish, punish his people. Jeremiah chapter 6 as we begin to close. <clears throat> Let's begin with the first verse. The scripture reads, all ye children of Benjamin, gather yourselves to flee out of the midst of Jerusalem and blow the trumpet in Tekoa and set up a sign of fire in beth Hakarim, For evil appeared out of the north and great destruction. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. You see, He's saying that it's going to be evil that's coming against you and great destruction. You see, you're going to be attacked by the Chaldeans because of your wickedness, because of your sin. And we'll see as we go on in this chapter. But you see, the, 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 the warning is going out. And the warning must continue to go out throughout all of our churches about the ending of time about the ending of your life that you have to leave here one day. Right. And if you don't have Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're going to end up spending eternity in hell. This is the warning that is going out. So they're warned here. He says the shepherds with their flocks shall come unto her. They shall pitch their tents against her round about. They shall feed everyone in his place. And he's talking about Judah. Then he says, prepare ye war against her. Arise and let us go up at noon. Woe unto us, for the day goeth away, for the shadows of the evening are stretched out. Arise and let us go by night and let us destroy her places. They will be destroyed. The shepherds, if you are looking at third verse, the shepherds with the flocks, the shepherds are the leaders of the Chaldean nation that are going to lead the people into battle against Judah. And at sixth verse it says, For thus hath the Lord of hosts said, Hew ye down trees and cast them out against Jerusalem. This is the city to be visited. She is holy oppression in the midst of her. They would use trees to uh, cut down trees and then lean them on the fort so they can climb up across the tree in over the walls in order to fight the enemy. And this is what the Lord is allowing to happen. But if you notice here, he mentioned the oppression that is going on in the country. Then he says that seven verse, as a fountain casts out her waters, so she casts out her wickedness. Violence and spoil is heard in her. Before me continually is grief and wounds. Did y'all hear that? The same thing is going on today. It's going on in our world today. Violence, wickedness is going on in our world today. Oppression. Blacks have been oppressed for as long as we can remember. Asians have been oppressed. Women have been oppressed. There's oppression. We hear about these people, uh, especially uh, young girls who are sold into slavery today for sexual purposes. There's so much corruption with drugs and, and everything else that's going on in our nation today. And guess what? We act like it don't exist. And, and, and the thing here, it tells us here, we find out that what? God is not pleased. 
So many children are being aborted. Hundreds of thousands of children are being aborted every year. God is not pleased. God looked upon them and he saw all of the sin and wickedness that was going on. We got commercials with, with gay people in it promoting uh, uh, something to help keep you from getting AIDS or HIV. I mean, you can't turn around without them trying to shut it down your throat. And we've gotten to the point where it's okay. But sin is never okay with God. It's never okay. In that ninth verse, thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall thoroughly glean, my Lord, the remnant of Israel, as a vine turn back thine hand, as a grape gathereth into the baskets. You see what it says there? Thoroughly glean the remnant. And we know about gleaning, where they would leave so much behind. Remember reading over in the book of Ruth where they left so much behind for the poor to gather up. I had a friend of mine the other day told me that's what they did when up in a, a small town of Ghent was go behind them and, 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 and glean. Pick up what corn was left or whatever was left. But here the scripture says nothing is going to be left. They shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel. Everything is going to be taken and destroyed. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot, what, hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Let me read that again. The word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. I don't want to hear that. Y'all know the story about the funeral we had and it mentioned something about homosexuals and about seven or eight of them. Uh, uh, I was told after the service, got up and walked out of, out of the funeral. Yeah. Yeah. I saw them walking out. They were sitting over there on this side. Yeah. I saw the bodies. I wasn't looking right at them. I didn't know what was going on. But somebody called me later and said, you sure know how to clear out a church, don't you? And told me that's what it was, a group of homosexuals. Amen. Amen. But look at what the words say. In that tenth verse, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. The Bible said, delight yourself in the Lord. We should delight in the word of God. We, we, we shouldn't turn a deaf ear when the word of God says something about our sin. We should take advantage of his grace and repent of our sin. They have no delight in it. They hate to hear the word of God. As long as you're doing some other things, sometimes people, uh, 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 and, and y'all know this, you know this, you, you've experienced it just like I have, most of you anyway. You go to a church and, you know, they have a program and, and they have four or five choirs and, and they sing you until you're about to pass out. And, and, and two or three hours later, the preacher come up and everybody gone. Amen. <laughs> but what, what's more important, the word of God or singing? Singing has its place, but it does not supersede the word of God. Amen. Amen. But I've seen that time and time again in growing up, and not only growing up, but as a man. But the word of God is the key. He says, as we... Close out. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken. The age with him that is full of days. And their houses shall be turned unto others with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, said the Lord. Everybody's going to be affected by this. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And look at what the scripture says. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealing what? Falsely. And, and, and what we want to look at is and be reminded of what? Peace, safety, everything's going to be all right. That's what they're telling us over the pulpit. But you better know about the end time. 
What's going to happen in the end? God is warning us Sunday after Sunday to come to Jesus. But the prophets, they are dealing falsely. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't, and I'm not going to call names, but and we're about to wrap up here, but I don't hate on no millionaire preacher. That's, that's what you got? All well and good. I was talking to somebody about a particular preacher. This thing came up on my phone about how much money they're making. And, 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 and their net worth, one of them was $760 million. A lot of them were 40, 50, 60 million dollars. One of these guys got his own private jet, and I was saying, you know what? I ain't gonna say who I was saying it to, or uh, 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 somebody out of this church. I said, if that were me, man, I'd be mean, gave this money to this person. I mean, a million houses for those people that are, 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 are homeless and, and so forth and so on. I, I, don't, I can't take it with me. And they were saying, well, well, maybe the Lord want them to have that jet to go over and, and, and preach to these folks and this. And I said, they can buy a plane ticket and go over there and do the same thing. <laughs> but, but, but the Bible said they were dealing falsely. God is pulling the cup. <laughs> Man, God can show us a whole lot of stuff Amen. that's going on that we don't know that's going on. Amen. You, you, you know, you heard about the politicians that knew the stock market was going to crash and they pulled out hundreds of thousands of dollars. And then they're going to say, well, I ain't know it. How you don't know what's going on with your money? I don't care who you got in charge. They have to, they can't make a decision unless you tell them to pull your money out. We're not stupid. But they don't want nobody else to know, oh, it's going to crash. I'm going to get mine out. Remember the love of many going to wax cold. That's it. And it'll be back up in your face the next turn for you to vote for them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God is not asleep, y'all. <laughs> and he, he pulled the covers off. He let us see some of this stuff. Amen. And so they are dealing falsely. And in 14 verses it says, they have healed also the hurt. Listen at this carefully. I want you to get this part. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people. And what's the next word? Slightly. Slightly. You know what? When you lie to a person, it'll make them feel good for a little while. They lie to them. And, 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 and guess what it does? It makes them feel good. And the Bible says slightly. Just for, just for a, a little while, a little bit. You make me feel good because look at what they say. Peace. Peace. We what? There is no peace. You see, the Christian can see there is no peace. We, we, we can see it because what? It's right here. The Lord already showed us ahead of time what's going to happen. But they'll tell you, oh, everything's going to be all right. Yeah. We're going to come out of this, and you're going to have more than what you ever had before. They'll tell you all this stuff. But even if that happens, there is still no peace because you're without who? The Prince of Peace. Yeah. There's still no eternal life. And that's the most important thing. Yeah. But they heal him, he says, slightly. They're saying, peace, peace, everything's going to be all right. And the Bible says, God says, there is no peace. Amen, amen, amen. And that's what he, Paul said in 1 Thessalonians. He said, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Say they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. They let the people know that they weren't in any danger, my Lord, when danger is all around them. Thus saith the Lord, this is what needs to be done. Stand ye in the ways, and see and ask for the, the old path. Where is the good way, and walk therein?
in and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said what? We will not walk therein. In other words, repent. Thus saith the Lord, repent. But they said, we will not walk therein. Also, I set watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. Don't want to hear the trumpet. I don't want to hear that. Therefore, hear ye nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people. Even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law. But they did what? Rejected. Rejected. The same thing is happening today. You tell them about Jesus. I don't want to hear that. I, what I'm doing now makes me feel good. <laughs> my Lord. It makes me feel good, but that's only for the moment. Because time is coming when you're going to have to give an account of your sins. And, 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 and the Lord is warning us. They're going to say peace and safety, that you're not in danger, everything's all right. But we need to hear what God has to say. And he has a wrath that he's going to pour out in the end. So you need Jesus in your life. And I want to tell you something. We're going to close. I want you to go back. Go back to uh, 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. And we're going to close with this. Amen. The day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. We actually have a greater opportunity to tell people about Jesus Christ. Because they're scared. And I want to tell you something. Just thought about something. Before we go there, go to um, Acts real quick. The book of Acts, chapter 24. See, I just thought about it. The Lord brought it to my mind when I said scared. People ought to be scared. If you're not saved, you, then they should be scared. Before we close out there, let, let's go to, it's only a couple of verses here. Acts 24. Look at that 24 verse. You need to go back and read the verses just before that to see how they got together here. But that 24 verse, Acts 20, chapter 24, verse 24, the scripture says, And after certain days when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning what? Faith. The faith in Christ. He tell him about he, he preached the gospel to him. And as he reasoned of what? Righteousness? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We know what righteousness is. You, you, your righteousness got to exceed the righteousness of the Pharisee. You got to be in Christ. You can't just be doing good things. You've got to be declared righteous by your faith in Christ. So he preached to them about being right, temperance, which is self-control, which people that are not saved, they don't have self-control. Right. Or they won't be going crazy today with the stock market and everything else that's going on. He talked about temperance and, most importantly, what? Judgment. And look what happened. And judgment to come. Felix did what? He trembled. And they should be trembling. And people are trembling today. They don't know if this is it. They don't, I mean, this virus can be contracted in so many ways. So many different people. So many places that anywhere you go. Do you know churches are closed today? And I'm not putting the pastors down. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying, anywhere you go. That's right. The disease can be contracted. This is so we. This is unprecedented, as they say. We've never had anything like this in our time, where everything from sports to I mean, Las Vegas is shut down. Yeah, the actors are not acting. In fact, some of them are getting sick. Everything is shut down. So you ought to be like what Felix, if you're not saved. The scripture said Felix trembled. And he answered, Man, get out of here. I want to hear that. Get away from me. Go that way, for 
for this time, when, when I have a, a convenient season, then maybe we can get together and talk about it. But right now, I don't want to hear that. Get, get away from me. You're scaring me. And I'll call on you another time. That, that's what he told them. So they ought to be afraid because of this time that we're in. They don't know. They don't know that there are times, there are things that have to take place before Jesus comes back. So they are afraid. Now, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. <clears throat> 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm in 10 and we're going to close with this. And I want you to remember, stick a pen in this. Look at what he says. Now we beseech you, brother, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon, what? Shaken. Shaken. Where? In, in your mind. Or be what? Trouble. Trouble. Brothers and sisters, don't be shaken in your mind. Don't be troubled by what we hear on the news. It's going to get worse. They already told us it's going to get worse. It's going to get worse, but he's still saying don't be troubled. Then he said neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. You see, that was a, a false letter that was sent out. They said it was from Paul. And they were saying that, that uh, uh, the rapture had already taken place. So he said, don't, don't, don't be shaken by that. That's not true. He says in the third verse, let no man deceive you by any means. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except that come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And I'm not going to go into that, because it will take a while. But maybe we'll do it next Sunday, I don't know. But you can read on about the Antichrist, the son of perdition, the scripture talks about. But the key is, don't be troubled. Don't be shaken. Don't let anybody fool you. That will be a falling away first from the church. And it's going to be something that's very, very noticeable. But that's another sign. And that's why he tells us, don't be troubled. Don't be shaken. Because this stuff has to happen first. And not only that, God is with you. No matter what happens, God is with you. The doors of the church are open. Amen. Is there one today? We ask you to come and give your life to Christ. The scripture teaches us, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life.